happy, happy, happy Tuesday. You know what Tuesday means? It means Rainbow Six Siege tonight. And I'm your host, Bearded Man, and I'm joined by the terrific toner. That's the adjective for tonight. I love terrific. that adjective. <laughs> I'm, I'm, how, how you doing? How are you, how you doing? I am doing great. How are you, Bearded I'm, Man? I'm ready. I'm ready for R6. You know, this is one of my favorite nights of the week. Uh, so and I'm really excited to see what our team has in store. Now, tonight's matchup, your Carthage Firebirds versus the Murray State Racers. I'm excited. I think Murray State, you know, I know we played them last season. And it was, it was a, I believe, a different team. I think they have different... Uh, groups of teams, you know, I think they have gold and then they have uh, maybe silver. I'm not quite sure. But tonight I'm excited to see because both teams going two and one so far in the season. Firebirds having a uh, 12 round difference uh, as opposed to Murray State, who has a 14. So two two rounds separating these two <laughs> from a uh, even matchup. So I'm excited to see. Are you what are you expecting from tonight? I'm expecting a lot of, uh, like, just what you said, it being super even, so it's going to be uh, hopefully the closest game and most eventful <laughs> game. I want to see a lot of Siege tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm hoping for. And first one being on Villa, it, oh, yeah. it, it's going to be a great first Villa map. is a very notorious map. Now, we have, had, we have seen the Firebirds play this previously, but it was very hit or miss. You know, there was a pretty even matchup when we played on this before, so I'm excited to see. Now, starting off with your bands, uh, Carthage is going to be banning at first. Who are you going to expect them to ban on attack? Probably Jackal. Probably Jackal. It's either going to be that or Thatcher. I mean, I, we've seen a lot of Dokubis, though. We have seen, recently. yeah. We've I, seen, I think the past two weeks, Thatcher was banned mm -hmm. on both ba both weeks. And as I say that, Thatcher is banned this week, so we're <laughs> ending that streak. But I think Thatcher is a great person, but there are some people who are arguably better. Because yeah. so many people have those secondary EMP grenades, and there's a Jackal ban. No surprise there. Thatcher Jackal's almost guaranteed there. Uh, but as I was saying, the secondary, having a, so many of these operators have the secondary EMP grenades mm -hmm. don't really change it up much. So I'm, I'm not too surprised that we're seeing a Thatcher ban, but, you know, it's understandable if we don't. Mira on this map, though, uh, it looks like the uh, racers are going to be banning Mira. Mira is a great, great person on this map, so I'm not too surprised about that. And Kaid, very solid set of bans. What do you think? It's pretty standard. I mean, the... These are the bands that you're really looking for. They're, a lot of them are very annoying to deal with, oh, yeah. so you just <laughs> want to get them out of the way. Um, I mean, ex especially just when it comes to Mira and when it comes to Cade. Like, it, it, it just two different play styles that really complement each other. You know? Oh, definitely. Now, uh, your Firebirds, you know, same lineup as usual. We are starting <laughs> off with Xerxes, Ice, Helix, Tuan, Teshi, and Quizby. Some very, very powerful people. Some amazing players to see. Always excited. And it looks like the Razors starting lineup, seeing Bravo, DNA Plays, Suwon, Dual Shock, and Monty Poncho. Uh, a very interesting set of names as well. But the Firebirds starting off on defense, running Bandit, Aruni, Pulse, Azami, and Jaeger, as opposed to the Racers, who are kind of still figuring it out. But it looks like running a Habana, Zofia, uh, Finca, Nomad, and Ace. What do you think of those? I'm thinking it's going to be a really, really, how do you say, not explosive, but destructive? destructive, 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 that's the word, you always get the right words to say, and I'm over here like, oh, no, every <laughs> once in a while I don't, every once in a while I'll think of a word that is just completely incorrect, <laughs> but yeah, but, destructive is definitely true for this, uh, for this attack side, but I think oh, yeah. the, def like, uh, the defenders that the Firebirds have, should be able to slow them down a lot, so let's see if they can, yeah, now, this is an interesting, set of events we can see the firebirds on second floor on that bar and um aviators room and we did see that they had a soft wall onto aviators room viewing that balcony doorway um it had the aruni gate on it to allow you know any sort of projectiles to kind of be destroyed if they're going through it but um they're still having that soft wall so they're gonna have to really be careful about that but we do see that the murray state racers slowly making their way onto site um DNA plays onto that stable yard balcony. Just we're seeing both of them converge slowly wow. but surely onto point. Bravo's already outside of that Bravo site, um, that B site. <laughs> <laughs> bravo, Bravo. It sounds cooler if I say Bravo. <laughs> yeah, but uh, like, that's just great pacing. There's a lot of speed going into it. I, definitely. Oh dear. And we're seeing Tuan with that pulse <laughs> and beautiful as if it was planned. Tuan seeing that heartbeat through the floor and placing that C4. The, the racer player just not moving. It looked like that was Suon, which Finca being out of the picture for the Firebirds is a really good pick because now they don't have to worry about those Finca stims that can pick people up who are downed. 
Um, so the Firebirds, I think, are off to an awesome start here, mm -hmm. but there's plenty of time left in the round. For sure. I mean, going 5-4, that's going to help a lot, but there is a minute 20 left. However, this really... See oh, dear. Unfortunately, Ice Felix being picked off by DNA Plays. Um, DNA Play 45, but <laughs> I always like to shorten it up Just a little bit. Just for the bit, specifics. You know? See, that's an interesting Azami wall placement. You know, Xerxes being able to duck underneath. As I say that, Ooh. we're seeing Quisby taking shelter into that vault, taking out the Nomad, taking out DualShock 4 for the racers. Being flashed just a tad bit, the, it looks like the Jaeger ADS was not able to do anything. Um, but Xerxes is in that side hallway doing some a uh, little bit of back and forth there with one of the racers. Can't quite sure who that it can't quite make out who that <laughs> just is. Just playing a little peekaboo. <laughs> a little bit of a peekaboo there with that, uh, amazingly. But Tuan is pulling out that heartbeat sensor again, seeing a bunch of uh, circles, a bunch of uh, hearts, as I say, <laughs> through the floor. Uh, honestly, it, it, when you have that heartbeat sensor, you are all intel. You know, when you have that C4 gone, there's nothing you can do outside of just kind of locate where everybody is for the rest of your team, which is so essential in this mm -hmm. game. We can do see we do see three of the racers, the remaining racers, pushing onto site, and we can see Monty Poncho is planting, but Quizby oh. going to throw the C4, not taking anybody out, but slowing them down, delay. and stopping it. It looked like they were gonna, uh, they were kind of maybe a little bit scared there. Tuan taking somebody out, Quizby unfortunately falling. Firebirds down, loser. <laughs> Firebirds knocking down the racers to the last person. There we go. And Tuan running in after some amazing pulse gameplay, running in and finally finishing off the remaining racer. What a what a round. What did you think? I thought it was a great start for for Murray. Like wow, it, it great pacing. They were quick to get to site, but it was tough to push the defenders mm -hmm. out and get picks off of it. So Firebirds held it great, and we just saw a really good attacking. So I I think it's the uh, like tw I think it was Tuan playing pulse just really slowed them down, oh, and yes. it, that was just great yeah. defense. But same side attack was just I I loved it personally. Oh, yeah. No, I think Murray State was phenomenal. I think was a, a, a really good textbook yeah. example of a good push. But because of the fire. It's just kind of placed a little bit better mm -hmm. and just got some really good angles, really good picks. Ultimately did kind of pull off that 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 um, win there. Um, but I'm saying that and I'm expecting Murray State to kind of come back, you know, knowing a little bit of what the Firebirds are going to be pulling out for this next defensive round. But also the Firebirds are going to know that as well. Mm -hmm. And as we move on to round two, it looks like we're going on staying on that second floor, but going to the other side of the villa going on to that statue and trophy room firebirds once again on defense running bandit malusi pulse frost and valkyrie whereas the racers running iana uh <laughs> lion iq nomad and ace slightly different but still kind of explosive having mm -hmm. ace and nomad in that uh, arsenal what do you think well it's going to be really nice having that iq there to um to try and find the pulse mm -hmm. i mean it, using their their gadget they can see all the defenders gadgets that are being used at the time so uh, just extremely powerful so i think they're gonna they're using the right things to counteract the firebird so let's just see if they can pull it off precisely now we do see uh dna plays slowly but surely making their way into that bedroom area unleashing a, a good magazine of bullets into the window, kind of uh, opening up the window, but also kind of maybe spooking the Firebirds a little bit, kind of intimidating them slightly. But we do see Bravo running in on Iana, going to be going into that vault, clearing out any sort of defensive uh, stations that the Firebirds might be pulling in that area. But we do see one of the Firebirds uh, hiding. It didn't look like they were in vault, but they were like right next to that vault outside of that uh, aviation doorway. So we might see that kind of surprise them. Tuan Ooh. getting a pick on the Nomad for the Firebirds. What, once again, a phenomenal pulse play. Bravo is taken out by Teshi there. Uh, this is some excellent defense from the Firebirds. We see Teshi pushing kind of slightly up towards Aviation in the corner. Might be catching them off guard because that doorway, when you walk through it, there's like four different angles mm -hmm. that you could be holding. And as I say oh, that, wow. Ice Helix and Xerxes getting picks of their own onto Suwon. And I believe that was Dual Shock. Remain one. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a flawless run. <laughs> As I was trying to say that, DNA plays remaining. And because Xerxes was able to, I believe that was Xerxes, rotating around sil just silently, able to get that pick and kind of scare them from that staircase. What do you think was like, because that seemed like a really good attack. What mm -hmm. do you think went wrong there? 
I think just lack of intel mm-hmm. mainly. You want to use a little bit more drones, get some more intel on the shootout because it seemed like, I, I mean, we saw with that Yana drone, it went in, you know, cleared out the area, but right behind there, there was another Firebird waiting just uh, right across the way. So I think just getting a little bit more intel would be more beneficial, but uh, no, overall, just great defense by the Firebirds. They, oh, yeah. they held so much space. And that, that really is the name of the game, because mm-hmm. if you spread out your operators just enough, you can hear pretty much all points of the map and Definitely. know where people are coming from. You know, this is how I think you know you're playing here. You're, you're seeing some high-level Rainbow Sixes. Mm-hmm. The flaws aren't even in just like, a, oh, you just played the game incorrectly. It really comes down to those small moments of you're just holding the, the right angle. You yep. know, the, the, the Racers are playing great operators, and it's some of these Firebirds that are just playing these defensive spots so well that even the great offense that we're seeing is just getting caught off guard. For sure. Um, so I think that is something, as we're seeing uh, the Racers playing once again IQ against... So it looks like the Racers playing Sledge, Lion, IQ, Buck, and Ace. The IQ is, I think, essential at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Firebirds running Jaeger, Malusi, Clash. We're seeing that classic Ooh. Clash on Tuan, or from Tuan. Um, Ice Felix playing Mute and Xerxes playing Castle. We have four out of five... No. Well, does IQ's gadget spot Clash's shield? Because technically it's I a think bit of so. When, it, when it's activated, okay. yes, I do believe it does. Um, it is very loud, though, so regardless, you're yeah. probably going to figure out where the Clash is. Cla- clash is way too loud for its so own. <laughs> it, w- it wouldn't make too much of a difference. Yeah. But what's interesting is that we're seeing that DualShock 4 is going in from the basement side and probably trying to open up the floors underneath the Firebird. So it. It, it'd be a really nice vertical play. Yeah. Well, and I expect Bravo to be doing the opposite, going on that second mm-hmm. floor and then using the vertical play downwards. I like that. I, I like that, too. And it's unfortunate because this site, that is the biggest weakness. You're able to blow uh, You're able to destroy a lot of the floors looking on the site. So the Firebirds are going to have to play very, very smart. They're going to have to really watch what angles they're holding and make sure that, hey, if somebody shoots from above me, if somebody opens up the, the floor above me, they can see me. So they really have to keep that in mind. And as we were saying that, and honestly, as I say that, though, Tuan on Clash, you know, a phenomenal player, but Clash's biggest weakness is that vertical play. If somebody's able to kind of see right above them, it's not going to be good. Uh, we do hear that second lion pulls going out, uh, marking some of the Firebirds. And uh, unfortunately, Ooh. Firebirds losing their very first operator oh! of the round a ton of trades there though uh quizby and teshi getting picks but it looked like bravo taking out tuan honestly clash you know is a great player is a great operator and tuan on clash is great but when you have this this double vertical play it's just not ideal um and as they say that teshi taking out monty poncho making it a 3v2 in favor of the firebirds uh, however, Teshi having a ton of damage taken, just barely any health remaining, pretty much making it a 2v2. But it all depends on how well they play. Quisby moving in, seeing that, that there IQ. There we go. What a beautiful, beautiful shot there. Remaining one racer is remaining, and that is Sledge. And Sledge is honestly a pretty good operator, having a great kit regardless, great weapon. So I'm not surprised. Uh, this might be a really good one. But as I say that, Quisby positioned great. You know, hiding behind some of those areas, making sure that it's the last place they'd expect somebody to be hiding mm-hmm. and popping out when their back is turned. Quisby, amazing, amazing round play there. Um, I'm seeing some really good plays from the Firebirds, and it's very much the smart hide. It's the smart placements yeah. in their defense. It's not, I mean, they're winning these gunfights as well, but Murray State is also, we're seeing some really good mechanical skill from mm-hmm. them. So it's all coming down to that placement and those angles, and that's, I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. I'm glad that's what we're seeing. What did you think? I, I mean, I say right now, Firebirds are doing great at adaptability, is that they're adapting to these changes, like the vertical play and the destructibility so far by by Murray, it's, it's just been really great. Some really solid pushes, but the Firebirds' ability to adapt is also giving them the the upper the upper hand. Mm-hmm. So I, I think right now, I, I, I want to see something for the attacking side. It's just a, some more synergy yeah. between like groups of two or something trying oh, yeah. pushing out objectives because it seems like they're just getting stopped one by one and wanted to see some more more operators that that are being synergized together i think that will be the best thing for murray um to do at this time yeah well and as you say that that makes a ton of sense we are seeing just kind of solos at this mm-hmm. point 
and it's it's the solos that do work from time to time but you need to have in those duos if you're getting picked off one by one yeah. you know it's it's like uh like scooby doo you know you got to make sure you got <laughs> You know, you got Scooby and Shaggy going in <laughs> together. You got <laughs> Hansel and Gretel. Oh yeah, you got you got the the dynamic duo. Yeah, Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> well, uh, I, I peanut get... butter and jelly. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I get what they're doing too with like with the line because that you can just kind of play off of it. But it was just you know just getting picked off one by one was the, the the real big problem. So I think right now, hopefully, we'll see some. We see a lot of good things that can be used and synergized together. Oh yeah. And we do see dual shot going in from that basement once again. Exactly. Probably My looking goodness. for Twan. It's 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 almost guaranteed they're they're really trying to find mm -hmm. Twan. And will Twan be able to uh, spot you know maybe one of these these flankers in a sense focusing on them, or will Twan be able to kind of defend and catch them off guard? Um, but as I say that, we do see some of the racers already making their way to point slowly but surely. Suwan on that Osa. Oh, as I said though. We do see Tuan taken out by DualShock 4, exactly what I predicted, but that is going to be a really good pick for the racers. DualShock taking out Xerxes as well. It is only three Firebirds remaining. I think the Firebirds just, I think Tuan just was not watching that that mm -hmm. uh, that flank, um, and it really bought, it really caused issues Yeah, because it, it is rare to see people go down there. That's why basement is probably my favorite place to push, because it's so safe. Yeah. And then just coming up from the, from the, um, a floor but no no one is gonna fully realize it as i say that um as we say that we can see there's a lot of explosions a lot of destruction happening onto the site opening up some angles for the racers to the firebirds we can see teshi taking cover behind that bar area unfortunately uh, bravo Ooh. as i say that a ton of things happened in murray state getting a flawless round there honestly that was that was what they needed yep. it was very clear they were able to focus on taking out those essential people, Tuan especially. And as once Tuan was taken out, they just unleashed heck. They unleashed every bit of destruction <laughs> they can onto that site, opening up all these different walls, mm -hmm. all these doorways, to the point where there were no angles for the Firebirds to really hold. Yeah, it it basically it just opened the map for, for Murray State. And now they had so many options to take advantage of, and they did, and it, that was a really great push yeah. from them. Definitely. Now the Firebirds seeing that should be changing up slightly you know tuan still going pulse for this round will we see a different strategy maybe playing a little closer to site maybe playing on site you know it's hard to say because mm -hmm. now we know that the racers are are expecting that and that is not what you want in this game you want that mystery that that mis mystery and mysteriousness the suspense <laughs> uh, I like from it. a defense mm -hmm. uh but your firebird's still on defense once again running that bandit malusi pulse frost and valkyrie whereas murray state kind of sort of switching it up slightly running that dokubi nomad iq buck and ace dokubi is going to be a great great pick here being able to send out a phone call to all of the defending operators ringing them up you know <laughs> playing their ringtone and uh you could hear that from pretty pretty far um so if you're uh if, like tuan in this case if you're roaming roaming off the site and the racers hear that, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> oh, yeah. You definitely don't want to get your uh, your phone going bam, bam, during a gunfight. Yeah, it is not fun. <laughs> it's more of a vib... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of a vibration. A bing bong? They know that. They're not going to play their real ringtone. They have the... <laughs> they have the... Beep, uh, beep. <laughs> they hear the uh, the vibration. They set it on vibration. <laughs> there, it's movie theater mode, you know. Do not disturb. Oh yeah, because <laughs> that's you the know, last why, thing. You why want. don't they just put it in airplane mode? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Well, but well I maybe think it is high the, tech because it, Dokubi is Dokubi's, <laughs> Dokubi's supposed to be this hacker, so <laughs> it makes sense. Regardless, though, <laughs> back to the match. You know, two minutes left. We're seeing the when we, the racers are taking it slow and steady, as we saw previously, and it really worked out for them. But I say that Monty Pancho and uh, Suwan are going to be making their way onto aviators but that doorway is destroyed reinforced is barricaded onto aviators here's that dokubi phone call we were talking about we see tuan have to take it out the vibrations you know just like no oh, no bam, they're gonna bam. hear me <laughs> <laughs> um but the firebird you know, still holding tuan is playing on site as we expect teshi taking out dna place Ooh. and xerxes taking out suan a great double kill there for the firebirds that is nomad and iq out of the battle uh xerxes seeing the feet of somebody unfortunately teshi taken out
buy that dual shock for by buck uh for the racers <laughs> um it's always, it's a great i love that day because it's just <laughs> oh no don't go in there yeah xerxes oh, really dear. holding that angle seeing somebody oh, no. missing the shots that was i mean that was an impressive play if it was I don't think it was really planned in a sense. It just worked out where yeah. uh, Xerxes <laughs> knew somebody was at that staircase, so ran into the other racer player, and they kind of just were like, oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, wait, I need to... Uh, you're not on my team. <laughs> and it worked out. You know, one of the racers able to respond in time, Ooh. taking out oh! and Ice Helix. What a reaction. Seeing that little bit of change in the screen, seeing that head pop out through that missing board, Will we see Ice Helix take out this player? Unfortunately, well, I wouldn't say unfortunately, Tuan taking out that player before Ice Helix was able to take the shot. Bravo, though, remaining player. Nice. And as I say that, Ice Helix from nowhere <laughs> across the site. What a beautiful shot here from Ice Helix. <laughs> this, that is something you got to be careful of. You know, you have those two wings, in a yeah. sense, on that site. You know, if you commit to one, you got to watch out for that other. And if you commit to, you know, you and you go into <laughs> it's, statue. It's so interesting. I know. You it's, know? It's when you have that, when you go into statue, you have the bedroom area to watch out for. You have, you know, going into um, astronomy, and then you have that other site on yeah. the trophy room. But if you go into trophy room, you have to worry about bedroom and all those angles. So, like, you, it's, it's not a good angle to push from there because you have yeah. so many ways people looking in on you uh, but otherwise when you're alone it's really hard to cover all those oh, angles. Oh for sure I mean the, the biggest part about it is you gotta push with different groups at different places because you need to cut those angles down one mm -hmm. by one and take them for yourself like it, it's a very aggressive site and that's pretty much all there is to it and also listen to the footsteps is very important all the sound that is there there's a lot of destruction that can go on so oh, yeah. just realizing okay where what's coming where and who can watch what that that that's kind of the big thing so i, I like playing a little bit more of a supporter role because i personally don't like going onto that side no, I, I get it yeah. it's a little bit too scary <laughs> uh but moving on to round six the last round on the firebirds defense running that jaeger Ella, uh, Legion, Mute, and Castle. Now, Ella is somebody we don't see that often having these concussion mines that they're able to kind of throw on. They almost look like an ice cream cone. Oh, yeah. You know? The Gersmelt mines, <laughs> those things are awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. But uh, I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of these, these I wouldn't say trap op six, as we've said before, mm -hmm. all these trap operators. But um, against oh, no, don't. this oh. IQ that the racers are pulling, that is something they're really going to have to kind of watch out for. But we do see Teshi... Holding behind that shield, gonna throw the Grismont mine on top of that doorway. Uh, probably a really good, uh, really good maneuver there because mm -hmm. now it's a if they move on to site, it'll go off. It plays a really loud noise. It's not so much a, if they're pushing in the bedroom where you have no angles on, you have no like ground contained in that area. Um, ultimately, I think that's uh, exactly how you want to play Ella with those Grismont mines. But we're seeing Bravo slowly push in through Master Bedroom, and here it comes looking through. That opposite side, will we see Bravo walk through and get that Grismont mine activated? Um, it's a pretty pretty cool effect, so if you see that. But Teshi's kind of expecting that. We do see Teshi waiting for that sound, <laughs> waiting for that explosion, but playing at a safe enough distance that it's not going to affect them themselves, which has happened to me way too many times. Oh! But Ice Helix, there it is. Ice Helix not even... Whoa. Oh, Whoa. oh, no! Oh. Teshi... Able to get that Grisma Mon activated, but not able to get enough damage into Bravo. Bravo was able to aim through that obscured vision and take out Teshi. Now, Ice Helix, though, getting that C4 kill underneath, I assume, uh, was a great, great way to uh, take that pick off the clock. You know, a lot of time still be played, though. Uh, just over 60 seconds left. So a lot of time for the racers to kind of just use up, kind of play it slow, wait for these, you know, momentary picks take out one of the firebirds especially one of these really key firebirds that you do not want in the play such as lesion um because lesion regenerates those 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 goo mines as time goes on and that is something you don't want because when you step in those not only does it like obscure your vision but it plays a sound effect and you can't plant the diffuser mm -hmm. so if lesion's not out if lesion is out of the picture you don't really have to worry about that outside of the ones that they've planted previously but tuan is on that aviator room going to be trying to flank around maybe going to be pushing from a back side towards the racers attack probably 
Uh, Firebird's, you know, a 4v4 with 20 seconds left, a lot of time. Ooh, but as whoa. I say that, Xerxes not able to peek around fast enough, not able to swing. And unfortunately, two of the Firebirds taken out. However, Quisby and Tuan evening it out to 2v2. And oh! Tuan taking out another person, 2v1 right now. And the right Diffuser. Now. And the Diffuser's right there. Whoa! Quisby finishing off DNA plays. What a round, what a way to finish that defensive set, as I'll call it. Um, <laughs> what a what a couple rounds, you know. Murray State was really able to kind of cause some issues for the Pirates. Mm -hmm. So despite the five to one score, every single one of those rounds outside of maybe the two, the first two, Murray State really was able to kind of even those odds. Yeah. The first two rounds, Firebirds were able to really get a really get flawless rounds, but they were able to really quickly adapt. I think the Racers were a really really good team at adapting there. So I'm excited to see. What we're going to see them from them on defense as it's round seven and the sides are a swapping. <laughs> uh, right now, the Racers, Murray State is going to be on defense, whereas the Firebirds are on attack. What are you expecting from a Firebirds attack? <sighs> There's two different ways they can do it. I mean, we've seen we've seen them the more tactile approach, uh, just clearing everything and making sure everything is safe for a good push in. I think that's what they might start off with. I mean, right now we're seeing that we have a knock. And that's going to be really good for flanking around, mm -hmm. trying to catch defenders off guard. But However, <laughs> there is also a Solis that can track that. So yeah. it, it's going to be interesting. It all depends. So the, the racers on defense running Solis, Frost, Jaeger, Warden, and Valkyrie. That Solis is going to cause some issues for that knock. Mm -hmm. And probably that Iana too. Yeah. Because I believe, I mean, Solis's gadget is a... a special visor that basically does the same thing IQ does. Basically allows them to uh, detect and spot, locate any sort of electronic device in a certain area and could mark that for the remaining defenders. So, you know, I, that is a great counter to that knock and that Iana. So you gotta, Firebirds are probably gonna really have to focus on maybe taking them out. Because mm -hmm. arguably, now I say this, who is better or who is worse to be playing against? A Solis or a Pulse? Ooh, dear. Um, you know, it's really situational. For me, honestly, I'd say Pulse, just because he does have the C4 and can sense heartbeats, mm -hmm. not gadgets. Because gadgets, there's there's only so many that, and it needs to be active while mm -hmm. it's happening. It's not like she gets like a wall abilities, but Pulse does. Pulse can see anyone regardless of it, so. For me, honestly, I would say Pulse, but just the the option that um, Solis has of just having, I think, has a little bit more range than Pulse and can just show to all of her defender friends where everyone is. I think it's pretty balanced in that way, but honestly, I'd say Pulse is more deadly. Very, very true. I think it really is hit or miss. Now, remind me, I'm not too familiar. I haven't played much with Solis, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, can you still use the weapon? Uh, no, you, you cannot. You can't? Okay, so it's like Pulse with that yep. sense, uh, which makes sense. But as I say that, Tuan, unfortunately, getting really kind of a long shot, you know, was still outside. And Ooh, two of dear. the Firebirds are out of the picture. It's 3v5 and 60 seconds <gasps> left. But Teshi throwing that grenade. Quizby getting a pick oh! there. Teshi getting a pick, evening it out right away. What a great series of fortunate events there for the <laughs> Firebirds. Uh, Teshi with that amazing read there, that amazing play. And Quizby, I assume, as was equally amazing. Uh, just without a grenade, a little bit more mm -hmm. of a, a gunplay. And Ice Helix taking out Monty Poncho. Now it's Warden and Solis remaining against the Firebirds. Firebirds still having knocks, so you got to worry about oh, the Solis. Oh, dear. Solis peaking, taking a ton of damage, but was not enough for the Firebirds to get the pick. Will Teshi be able to kind of rotate around and get that pick, but we can see that Bravo is probably, Solis is probably holding that angle onto that doorway, so the Firebirds, mm -hmm. the Ice Helix is gonna have to rotate around, hopefully, and help. As I say that, we'll be running probably into sight, and will they get shot in the back? Not quite, but Tashi's gonna be planting. Ice Helix is now on that defensive roll, but is has the back turned to the yeah. Solis. That was an interesting play. I don't know if the, the call out was made for that. I don't know what went wrong there. Ice Helix just not as if the Solis was gone and out of the picture, but it was mm -hmm. not, and that is not what you want. Um, but going into round eight, that was a great, great defense from the oh, yeah. State. 
some great plays there from the Firebirds, but I will say that that last play, I don't know what happened because that was yeah. <laughs> that should have been a clear, hey, somebody's behind me. I need you to watch my back. And yeah. Ice Hillick should have positioned inside of the site or something to kind of watch for that. Or just trying to push him out because they knew where Solis exactly. was. The roughly, and, yeah. And, like, even a going down, because I think uh, uh, she did go prone, too, so that would make an animation sound. And I, I would just say, okay, let's uh, let's group together, let's push her, let's get her out of the way. Then we only need to deal with one on site. I'll plant, you watch me. Definitely. And then that, I think that would have been a little bit better. But leaving that Solus alive, that uh, she knows when you're planting. She yeah. just uses her little yeah. device and she just goes, beep, 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 and it's like, <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool oh, animation. It's so cool. And then it has a little, the little, little ears that ears go like, up. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's kind of cool. <laughs> but. We're moving on to round eight, it is five to two on this map. Firebirds in favor. Firebirds needing to win two more um, to catch to to win, but it is best or it is win by two as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so Firebirds, if they could just win two more in a row, it's not going to be any of issue. However, we've seen that we've seen a comeback from where Murray State is. So you know it is very much uh, if they can play these defenses. Oh yeah, extremely well. Um, ultimately, it's going to work out. But the Firebirds on attack, running in Ash, Ash, Blitz, Line, and Ian. And now Tuan on Blitz, probably going to be coming back and doing some little bit of, I wouldn't say revenge play, but after the, the Blitz debacle from last week, uh, definitely some, probably a little bit yep. of a, uh, anger towards any sort of Blitz player. Uh, but I'm expecting we to see some some amazing plays yep. from Tuan. Um, <laughs> It's going to be aggressive, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to see. Well, that's how you got to play Blitz is just kind yep. of run in. For the viewers at home, Blitz has a riot shield that, you know, it's bulletproof and has a bright light on the front that allows them to kind of run in, almost like flash grenade them with that light and just kind of push in. And when they can't see you, you can pretty much get as close as you want without any issue. Uh, and that is exactly how you play Blitz. You kind of just flash them and run in. So... <laughs> um, but we do see Ice Helix using those EMP grenades on the side. Because Quisby on that ace can be blowing up that uh, wall onto, I believe that's going to be Statue there. Uh, might be getting some really good uh, lines of sight on the point. We do see Tuan running around onto that first floor, really expecting, probably trying to seek out that Solis. Um, and we can see from their spectator Whoa. cam. Oh, Whoa. beautiful, beautiful patience by Tushy. And as I say that, Xerxes also able to get a pick on that bandit. Now that Alibi is out of the picture, too, the Firebirds can kind of play a little bit smart. We see oh, the C4. Dear. Unfortunately, the C4. <laughs> the only weakness. The only weakness to Tuan. <laughs> Honestly, I'm surprised we're not seeing a Firebird kind of run in and try and help Tuan. You know, but we do see oh. Ice Helix through the wall taking out Monty Poncho. Two of the, the players of the racers are on or near Tuan. So we are seeing Teshi kind of oh, running, wow. getting some shots through the wall onto Bravo, but wasn't enough to do any sort of lasting damage. But within the span <laughs> of a fraction of a second, <laughs> I see looks at Quisby getting the remaining two kills. Wow. What a. I. <laughs> that was. <laughs> That was literally like 0.1 second. That was I, yeah, like that, a <laughs> fraction of a fraction of a second. I loved it. It was like they coordinated. It was like, all right, it ready? Three, two, two one. one. Bang, bang. And there you go. It's a great time. Ultimately, Firebird's going to match point now. What do you think the Firebirds need to do on this attack to, to secure that win? Because we've seen some good defenses from racers. I say continue okay, the speed. I mean, we see here you got some three-speed operators, and that's really going to bump everything up. You got high destructibility. Uh, you got hard walls, soft walls. You got every, uh, or hard breach, soft breach, I'll say. You got pretty much everything in your arsenal, and you have line to keep people still. Yeah. So there's a lot of just quick pacing and aggressive pacing that I, hopefully we're going to see from the Firebirds, because I think they're just trying to wrap it up as soon as they can. Probably. Now, to the viewers at home, uh, Lion has a massive drone that sits above the map and sends out a big sonar beacon, basically, that will mark the location of anybody who moves during that scan. Um, but as we say that, okay, oh, I still like switched off the line and back on the Lion. So it's probably just kind of thinking of like, okay, what are we going to see here? Uh, but the Firebird's running a Thermite, Ash, Ying, uh, Lion, and Iana, whereas the Racer's running Solis, Warden, uh, Jaeger, Thunderbird, and Capkin. Now, Capkin 
I am expecting to see the traditional Capkin play mm -hmm. where it's going to end up being like one remaining player <laughs> walking through that Capkin trap and ending oh, the round. I love it. We have seen that time and time again <laughs> from you know our team, like, from the other teams in the past week. So um, hopefully the Fibers can kind of expect that not to happen. But we will see how that goes. We're seeing Tuan kind of run in, mm -hmm. maybe kind of expecting and trying to see those very faint laser indicators of the Capkin traps. I, and I um, think they, they did switch off of Blitz just because there is that Capkin, because oh yeah. that is a really big counter. Yeah. Um, but oh, you're going to have to be careful because you have that Ying um, that is, you know, you have the Warden who can take out that, or can really counter that Ying. Uh, unfortunately, both two of the Firebirds falling to that, and it's Thermite and Ash, so the Firebirds have no, any sort of, they have no explosive breach outside of the two frag grenades that Iana has. So they're going to have to play pretty smart here, mm -hmm. really have to focus on getting these good angles, kind of taking it slowly, um, holding these angles. We can see Tuan kind of taking, putting some covering fire into that corner. Throwing the Ying charge down the hallway, but will it be enough? Unfortunately, that player for the uh, racers was able to kind of run back onto site. And Bravo taking out one of one more of the Firebird. It is now Tuan and Xerxes versus four of the Murray State players. And as I said, it is now just Tuan versus the world. Will we see any great plays from Tuan here? We're seeing that Ying charge going out, taking the Capkin out of the picture 1v3 at this point. Honestly, if the racers, if I were the racers, I would be holding the diffuser. Because mm -hmm. um, we can see that Tuan does not have the diffuser. And that is ultimately key. You do not want to push in. Unfortunately, though, Tuan has to worry about these Capkin traps and very well could walk into one any second. Oh, most um, definitely. If they're not really watching for it. And when you're the last person alive, you have a lot to be worrying about. Capkin traps are usually the last thing to worry about. But we're seeing Tuan kind of make their way down the staircase. If this, if Tuan's able to come back, unfortunately ah. not. That is such an unbelievably difficult challenge, a 1v4. So there's absolutely no shame in that. <laughs> uh, I was saying, though, if Tuan was able to take, to, to come back from a 1v3, I would have been so unbelievably surprised. But we do look, it does look like they're going into a timeout. So what do you think the Firebirds are going to be talking about in this timeout? I think right now is just like how can we secure this one round before it gets out over time? It's like what is going to secure us the win? Is it going to be playing a little bit more tac or tactical, more slow, mm -hmm. or are we just going to try and rush in again and try and end it as quickly as possible? Uh, so I think that's really the way to go. Is just like how are they going to do it? And what's the best yeah. option for? Because right now we're going to go back to second floor. That that's just the that's just the fact of it. It's just like what is the best way. To push uh, either aviation or or bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the scoreboard, let's take a moment to analyze that. The Firebirds, Teshi is at the top of the scoreboard for the Firebirds, run, going seven kills, five assists, or five deaths, and four assists. And it looks like for the remaining Firebirds, it's pretty even. Mm -hmm. I mean, Xerxes having five kills, but, you know, having a ton of assists. Whereas looking at the racers, Bravo stands out having 12 yeah. kills, whereas it kind of goes down there dramatically. Dramatically, now kills are not the end, are not the the, the mm -hmm. point of the game in any sense. It does help, but you know if you're playing that defensive role and just ensuring that one of your players gets a kill, you're gonna have the same outcome. So you know, do you think that's the strategy they're running? Is really just you know some of these players are just focusing on support. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but you know, match point for the Firebirds. I'm ex I'm hoping that that timeout will uh, definitely kind of be a I, I wouldn't say a wake up call. But I'm sure Coach West was kind of calling them out, being like, guys, you need to be playing smart. You yeah. cannot be, you know, if, if somebody's down, you got to kind of focus on them. Uh, do not leave the remaining, uh, the rest of your team alone. But going on to this round, Murray State running Solis, Mute, Jaeger, Warden, and Valkyrie, whereas the Firebirds running Ace, Ash, Ying, Lion, and Yana, the same combo that we saw last round. Yeah, so I'm wondering, well, I, I think it's going to work a little bit better on this site. Um, it, it's not a bad comp overall. Um, it's a really good. The one thing I say is that right now your main competitor is Bravo on Solis. I would oh, yes. try and figure out how to get around that. Yeah. It's mainly going to be IQ. It's either that or just trying to drone and finding them because uh, Solis, 
has a lot of bullets. It has yeah. 51 with the P90, and it's an extremely deadly weapon and pretty good accuracy overall. Mm. You want to get rid of her as soon as possible because she's just going to be relaying information the entire round through. It, it's going to be just a bummer to play against her. Definitely. Well, and Bravo as a player themselves, you know, we're seeing that they're playing a lot more of a top fragger role. Ice Helix, though, taking out Suwon, taking out that Jaeger evening, or lowering the, increasing their odds, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, now, instead of a 5v5, it's a 5v4, and Jaeger is a great, has a great kit. So getting that out of the picture is a pretty good, uh, pretty good win. I wouldn't say a win, but a cr pretty good uh, <laughs> choice there. However, like we were saying, Bravo is probably the ticket. And if Bravo mm -hmm. is still like in the fight um, for the Firebirds, it's probably going to be a bad time for them. But we did see. I saw that too. I know, I was like, that, that was that was so dropped. They dropped off up. the balcony in unison. <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful sight there. That was like something you'd see from a synchronized uh, swimming. Yeah. A little. <laughs> it is synchronized exactly. was it repelling? Synchronized repelling. No, they weren't even repelling. It was just synchronized dropping. They just, <laughs> they just dropped off the balcony. But it was funny though because as they dropped, oh. they angled to oh, the dear. side. As I say that though, Tuan is trying to take out Bravo. The Firebirds know where Bravo is. So hopefully we can see maybe one or two of them kind of rotate around, try and focus on that. Getting some shots onto them, knocking them down to just over half health. But they've lost Ying, they've lost Tuan, so the Firebirds are really gonna have to be careful with that. They've evened mm -hmm. it out just slightly. Um, however, you just you cannot afford with that Bravo still in the play, yeah. especially with the two impact grenades, you know. Could very well be saving that for the diffuser planting. Um, which means that they can kind of just throw those grenades through the floor onto whomever is planting, stopping them, maybe killing them, maybe downing them. Yeah. Overall, just causing some issues for whoever is doing that. Um, Quisby moving away from that balcony. Honestly, that balcony area is so... It's very hard to push from because you're just very well... Uh, it's, it's a really easy area for the defense to kind of just cover. You know, so you cannot afford to do that. Ice Helix kind of swinging around, trying to unleash a little bit of cover fire into that behind the bar oh. area. But Quisby and Ice, Quisby oh. taking out Bravo. Ice Helix taking Monty Poncho. It is now 4v2 and dual shock oh. is taken out of the picture. Ice Helix hey. getting a triple kill and Teshi finishing off the round for the Firebirds, finishing off map one of tonight. What amazing, amazing map to see from both of these teams we are seeing some really, really good high-level play from both of these teams. I think despite this 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 difference in score, the races really gave the oh, Firebirds wow. a, a, a hard time there towards Especially the end. Especially Bravo. I, Especially amazing. Bravo. Look at that 13 and 8. 13 that, and 8. Now, again, amazing. kills are, you know, when you're a top fragger, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing a lot of good things, but we're seeing, like, the Valkyrie, you know. The, oh, uh, yeah. I believe it was, um, um, it was a Monty Poncho, I don't think. I, can't, I forget who it was, but one of the racers player was just dedicated to, you know, placing those cameras, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that was giving them some amazing intel. Oh, yeah. So we're seeing some very clear defensive and supportive players helping these more offensive fragger players. Uh, ultimately, going into map two, though, this could be, we could be going into a, a game, a map three here, mm -hmm. um, if, the, if the racers come back and kind of uh, win this map. So um, don't go anywhere, though. We have about a five-minute break while we get this next map set up and both teams kind of uh, relax and take a quick breather. So uh, we'll be back in just a few moments. So, you know, go get some popcorn, go change the pajamas. We will be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, for map two of tonight's Rainbow Six Siege game. It is your Carthage Firebirds versus the Murray State Racers. Map one was a very, very great, great round to watch. These are two very, very strong teams, very, very strong players within them, and we're seeing them go head-to-head -head in a very, very tactical situation, very, very tactical match. Uh, map one going, I believe it was seven, it ended at seven, three, in favor of the Firebirds. Firebirds losing a few towards the end, though, causing some some concern there. And even what a timeout, too. Yeah, <laughs> even a timeout. What did you think? Oh, I thought it was great. I mean, overall, like, uh, both teams adapted really well, but the Firebirds really adapted to try and to try and adjust on uh, on attack, which was amazing. Like, I, I I loved it. I thought it was flawless for, for both teams. I mean, oh, they, yeah. they had really good textbook R6 moves. Oh, yeah. This, is, I, this is great to watch. Mm -hmm. High-level Rainbow Six Siege here. Um, but moving on to map two, we are seeing on uh, Chalet, great, great map we've seen time and time before. Firebirds having both success and failure on this map. Um, but, you know, starting off with that Thatcher Jackal ban, not surprised. But what do you think the, the bans are going to be for defense? I think Kaid is almost a guarantee. I say that in Mira. I mean, Mira I either that or Valkyrie. It's too. either it's going to be a Mira, Kaid, or Valkyrie. It's probably mm -hmm. going to be a, a Mira and one of those two. Um, because Mira having these, uh, oh, oh, a zombie whoa. ban. Now, that's I like. A, <laughs> I like that. I think. I like it. I, I do like that. Now, I know that Ice Helix has played a zombie time after time on this mm -hmm. map, so that might be a bit of a target ban, or it might be a, a I don't like this operator oh, ban. I, I say so, <laughs> especially on stairs and second floor, oh, yeah. a zombie just it, it makes it extremely tough to find it. To find good angles yeah. around her. And there's that Mira ban. Uh, Mira having these bulletproof windows uh, that you can basically plant. And they're, they're one-way mirrors, I should say, that you can put on reinforced and uh, non-reinforced walls so that you could see through the wall if you're in the right angle. Now, that is a good, good gadget you do not want to be playing against. Um, and ultimately, a good ban. And I mm -hmm. think pairing it with a zombie... We're seeing some great plays. Now, Kaid is still in the play, so I'm expecting to see a decent amount of Kaid play. Um, but moving on to round one, your Firebirds are going to be defending, running a Jaeger, Wamai, Frost, Castle, and Alibi. What did you think of that? I think it's going to work pretty good. I mean, uh, so far, are they are they doing they doing first floor? Yeah, they're on Again? first floor defense here. Yeah, like, I I always gotta say for this because I, I never run that first floor that uh, they, for first run, but they Firebirds do it every single time, and this is a really solid uh, comp to do it with. I mean, that alibi is just extremely deadly, and Frost is gonna be extremely deadly as well. So I I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I think Frost on the site is is central at this point, uh, along with that alibi. Now we are gonna be seeing. Uh, Firebirds kind of hold that that top floor library right above site, and I think that is the essential point. If something were to go wrong, and I think if you were able to take that library, you know, it's smooth sailing onto the point. Um, it does sound like the game audio is glitched here, unfortunately, so hopefully we can get that fixed very shortly. Usually, as I say that, it's fixed in the moment, but unfortunately, it's not. So hopefully, we get that back <laughs> very shortly. We'll just um, make the sound effects. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. 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 Oh, oh. Okay. Peak, peak. <laughs> I'm not bad at the sound effects. Oh, there we go. Pew, pew. That was good. They're bad. Uh, Monty Poncho, though, using that secondary hard breach onto that castle, that castle barricade, opening up that second floor site. We do see moving onto it, but the Firebirds having some good positioning there um, and the proximity alarm going off, alerting the Firebirds that somebody has entered the point. Oh! Xerxes and Teshi getting two really good quick kills there and Ice wow. and Teshi getting two more kills there. Teshi with that double kill. It is just one more racer remaining and it's Lion. Will we see Lion be able to get this ace on the Firebirds? Honestly, with that LMG, I think it's very possible. I love Lion's LMG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I like the noise that it makes. You, <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Like it, it's a really, really satisfying sound. But yeah, this is gonna be really tough. A one v five. So hopefully we'll see some magic happen from Murray State. Yeah, we're seeing Lion kind of lay down and almost look like suppressing fire onto the site. But the rest of the Firebirds are kind of just gonna hold off site, expecting them to run in. Um, and we do have the frost mats in place, so that might cause some mm -hmm. issues. And, but I think, honestly, as I say that, I'm noticing 
the diffuser Oz is on that second floor, so I'm expecting some of the Firebirds to kind of be focusing on that. And we can see just off to the left side of the screen that there is a Firebird holding a bit of an angle um, just through that oh, hole in the wow. wall. Um, we're seeing the LMG take <laughs> out Teshi. Teshi not able to get that triple kill for the round. Um, but we're going to see the flash grenade potentially be popped there. For, but the Wamai, oh. the Wamai is going to attract it. <laughs> And that is that is how Amai is. That's the gadget's intention. Oh no! Is to kind of reverse the effect of the throwable, whether that be a frag grenade or not. The um, Uno reverse. The Uno, it literally is an Uno <laughs> reverse card. You know, Jaeger is just an Uno skip card. Well, Mai is an Uno reverse card, and uh, Fuse is a draw four. <laughs> <laughs> it works out all the time, and you love to see it. But the frost mats, you know, we see Dual Shock, very expecting the frost mats which is a great great read great assumption but unfortunately we saw uh one of the firebirds having that off angle onto that window flawlessly executed there i think for the firebirds mm -hmm. um i think uh it was a little bit of a interesting situation maybe they got some really quick kills in succession so i don't really i wasn't quite sure to i wasn't able to kind of keep up of <laughs> how were they able to do that but mm -hmm. ultimately i think it came down to positioning um, what did you think? I just say it was a little bit too quick to go into library. Firebirds, ha <laughs> that that's an integral part. It's almost like a third site that the firebirds like uh, keep in library. And, and for whenever time you uh, will defend that first floor, so you really want to make sure that that you're clear going into library because that's going to allow for a lot of vertical play. And no, the firebirds has just had a great lines of sight into it and just. It, it just did not work out for Murray State. So a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully that we'll see some better attacking rounds coming up and now yeah. it's gonna be second floor. Now I did, I will say this though, I did like the strategy they played was they were not holding library. They were holding outside a library. Mm -hmm. They are holding everything but library, which kind of forced them to kind of, if, you try, if they tried to push in the library, they were just not gonna be able to get any sort of good angle because they're pushing into that line of sight that the Firebirds held. Yeah. Uh, ultimately though, I'm expecting to see a great, great defense here onto this site. Still on, uh, moving on to that second floor office and bedroom. We've seen some great, solid plays here from the Firebirds, but ultimately it comes down to what the racers are going to pull out. Um, we see the Firebirds running a Valkyrie, Ramai, Frost, Kaid, and Oryx, and the racers running that Iana, Sledge, Osa, Nock, and uh, Ace. What do you think of these two comps? I think it's going to be. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> Tessie unfortunately falling. Well, Mai is now out of the picture for the Firebirds. Firebirds really need to kind of compensate there, especially with some of these projectiles. We do see that four of the five racers have brought throwables, three of which have frag grenades, one of them having that secondary EMP. Um, and Suwon is already through library, pushing onto site, probably going to be stationing this shield onto that maybe fireplace staircase. Um, as I say that, probably not, but using that EMP grenade and unfortunately oh, no. misreading it, Ace losing one of those charges. Uh, but it, it, it won't matter in the end. Oh, it will dear. not, but Xerxes taking out that sledge. Um, unfortunately, the reload swinged was not working out for Xerxes. And uh, DNA, no, not DNA 4 plays. DualShock 4 taking out Xerxes. It is now 3v4. Firebird's really going to have to be careful here. We can see the frag grenades might be causing some issues. Uh, and the Osa, we do see the early uh, C4 <laughs> charge, but it wasn't, an, it was just kind of a, oh, I mispressed that instinct. Quisby taking out Suan. Unfortunately, Ice Helix is also taken out. It is just Quisby and Tuan against three of the racers. Will the Firebirds come back and take out more than they have? Will we see that 2v3 comeback? I hope so. I hope so too. We're seeing the Iana swing. Um, unfortunately, the attackers just all out attack there on, <laughs> on those two remaining firebirds, and it wasn't enough. Tuan getting uh, that back shot, basically. Um, shot back, shot in the back, I should say. <laughs> shot back. Um, but uh, firebirds <laughs> just kind of not able to get that, that steady hold that we were mm -hmm. expecting. What did you think? I say just Murray State had great flexibility, like in their operators. Like there was some good, uh, there was some three speeds. We saw one, we got, saw Shield with Osa, and we saw Ace. There's just a lot of things going for them, and also just their movement throughout the map as well. 
it was just really good. There's a lot of angles that they were taking, a lot of positioning that they were taking. So I think that's what Murray State did best. Um, but Firebirds also had great defense. I think it's just a little bit too aggressive on that side. So hopefully they're going to change around just a little bit. It looks like they're ru running relatively the same comp. I think I think now the Firebirds may be playing a little bit more passively. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say passively, more defensively, more on site, doubling down, uh, making sure that you know the the, the flanks that were uh, not a stronghold on that the Firebirds were able to kind of compensate now for these this next round. Uh, but ultimately, I'm expecting, I'm hoping the Firebirds can kind of expect that uh, coming out on this round but we'll see from the racers maybe they're able to kind of adapt where the firebirds are adapting and it works out for them teshi though dropping down onto that fireplace we might have seen a play uh might have seen that sledge versus teshi there um might be seeing some aftermath there in the kill feed very shortly whether or not it's in favor of the firebirds hard to say but it looked like they were kind of meeting for the first time in a sense. <laughs> They had that. It looked like the angle was like right there, like Teshi was gonna drop on top of them, um, but not unfortunately, because they like to prove me wrong. Um, but already, you know, Monty Poncho making sure that library is clear, allowing them to kind of push forward on their attack. Will we see the adapt the adapt adaptation for the EMP grenade spot? Will they, you know, remember to do it on the top of the the wall? We're seeing the shield being popped out, and there we go. We're going to see the MP grenade. But the Firebirds oh, wow. adapting. <laughs> like, what a great, great choice there from the Firebirds. They were probably excited. Now, now they got to figure out where where it is. It's, it's, it's got to be on the floor. Um, that was just kind of funny to see. As I say that, Teshi taking out Osa, though. Not quite sure what happened there, but it looked like Teshi probably went from beneath taking out that Osa from the staircase. Unfortunately, we can see one of the racers is holding that angle on to Teshi and oh, is going to take out Teshi as he kind of swings around, unfortunately. But Teshi getting a kill there, it's a one-to-one. -one. We always like to say when you are in defense and you get a kill, that's your job. You've, you've served your purpose. Um, you know, there's no shame in that. Unfortunately, though, Xerxes is taken out um, by one of the racers player. It is now not in favor of the Firebirds here. They just really need to hold these angles, play a little bit smart here. Will we see Ice Helix have a good enough angle to get a kill? Unfortunately, not taking a little bit of damage there from, I believe, an impact grenade. Um, a lot of grenades to be thrown out, though. Like, you know, we see that Iana has one and Sledge has two, so um, that could cause some issues for the Firebirds if they're not positioned correctly and they don't take the proper cover. Mm -hmm. And now silence. Very uncomfortable silence. It's just some <laughs> some shots going out to, to kind of maybe um, scare somebody into running out. Mm -hmm. um, only a few seconds left as it comes out. 15 to be exact. And more and more. Oh, Antoine wow. peeking, able to take <laughs> the headshot. Oh, po dear. Posby taking somebody, taking out DNA plays. Ice Helix tying it up 1v4. Oh. And the Firebirds kind of know where to expect. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> <laughs> that is the place to plant on this site. So I was going to be very scared. Now, I think Twan might have been a little bit scared there. Like, if I peek and they're not there, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> uh, ultimately, though, really, really good uh, comeback there from the Firebirds. What did you think? A lot better at adapting to the strategy. Uh, I, I will say, though, it's still a little bit too aggressive uh, on it. And I, I think just being a little bit safer when you're coming back, that would be... That'll go a long way. But overall, I think the Firebirds play this a lot better than they did uh, round two. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see that same thing. Uh, oh, get <laughs> going first floor again. First floor again. Will we see a similar strategy from the Firebirds? I think we're going to see them repeat the hold everything but library hold, <laughs> which honestly, I like it because technically they're holding library. They're just not on library. Mm -hmm. You know, they have the reservation. You just don't know how to hold the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I don't think I quote Seinfeld that often on these streams, so something I might sh I should. That's do. a Seinfeld quote. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Well, I'll show you the clip later. <laughs> uh, but it's not Seinfeld. This is Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, quite a little bit of a different concept. <laughs> <laughs> but shenanigans ensues as well on both areas. But 
you know, the remaining Racers players uh, running on that attack once again, running Iana, IQ, Sledge, Knock, and Ace. They're loving that knock, and I think it's working out for them. Firebirds, though, running Jaeger, Wamai, Frost, Kessel, and Alibi. Same composition we saw from that round one. So will we see, you know, the Racers kind of adapt where it didn't work out for them? What do you think? I, I think so. I mean, there are a few different things that they're going for. I just hope that they don't go in entirely too early. Oh, that's going to be a big pick. That is a bad pick for the Fire Firebirds losing Teshi there. Uh, racers are now at that advantage. Um, you know, Wamai out of the picture is just a very bad situation. Now we are going to see a little bit of a gunfire there from that second floor. Unfortunately, our cameraman is going to swap out before we can see any sort of chaos ensue. Bravo going to be throwing that frag grenade probably down that staircase. Um, but well, the <laughs> Jaeger ADS is going to stop it. Unfortunately, Ice Helix taken out by that knock. The knock is an issue that the Firebirds need to solve. They need to be figuring out how they can kind of I wouldn't say counter it, but they need to be focusing and making sure that they watch out for that that not coming out, um, coming behind them. Uh, but you know, you still have some good players in the field. You still have some dominant operators. You know, Jaeger's kit great. Tuan on that um, on Frost. You know, you have that those Frost mats in play that could cause some issues for one of the racers. Uh, we do see here Quizby can be having to watch out. Unfortunately, the oh! frag grenade catching Quizby. Quizby was able to outrun just slightly. Unfortunately, taking a little bit of damage there. Bravo taken out of the picture by Tuan. But Xerxes is taking out uh, Monty Pancho. Two against three now. Firebirds really having to come back here. Oh! But Xerxes getting what? One of the greatest flicks I've ever seen. Wow. What? In the name of Quizby, <laughs> what even was that? Oh my gosh, Whoa! and Quizby going 2v1, even in the odds one. here, it is now Xerxes and Quizby versus DNA plays 45. Will we see? We do, I think DNA is kind of trapped there, having the diffuser, but the moment they plant, they're probably going to be intercepted by one of the players, one of the Firebirds, but the clock is ticking. 25 seconds left on the clock, a decent amount of time, but DNA plays does not have forever having to plant at some point. And as we say that, that is exactly going to be trying to fake out that plant. Will we see either of the Firebirds oh, run in? We're seeing DNA be... having a really good angle onto Quizby. DNA, though, not, not knowing what to really do. The clock is ticking, and now they have to plant, so now would be the time for the Firebirds to kind of run in. Unfortunately, oh, there we go. unfortunately, Quizby swinging perfectly. Perfect timing for Quizby. No, anticipating Boom. it. I don't know if that was a, they had a camera on the site, or the Quizby I could think hear it, was, it. I think it was the audio It might cue. have been the audio <laughs> cue. Regardless, what a ma magnificent play by Quizby there on that round. What <laughs> like a great, when you said great, magnificent. Magnificent. Is. Magnificent. magnificent. Right. I don't know. It's just, I like talk, it. I like I don't. I don't know what to do with my hands. It's the I salesman I don't know hands. what to do with my hands. Anyway. You're painting a picture with your, your, your I you am. know. Quizby. I don't know. I want to learn sign language just for a case <laughs> like that, where I'm making a joke and, like, speak perfect. Or I wouldn't say speak. Sign perfect sign language. Uh, just people would not expect that, I think, sometimes. So I think I, I, that's it my be, mission. It, that cool is my New Year's thing. resolution is to learn American sign language. Is to do a little Duolingo and, and yeah. have a... I have a almost two, a 700 days. I know. I, it, is so cra it, it, it is so crazy that you can commit to that much. I think I could do like four days and then it's, I'm just like, it's oh, a, no. It's an interesting time. But you know what also is an interesting <laughs> time? Rainbow Six Siege, <laughs> especially when your Carthage Firebirds are playing against the Murray State Racers. Oh, this Firebirds time, look, they're going on kitchen. The Firebirds on defense once again, running that Valkyrie, Mute, Thross, Castle, and Oryx. Whereas the Racers... Running that Zofia IQ Sledge Knock and Thermite, we're seeing Knock again. What is going to change? What do you think the Firebirds are going to have to adapt for? Bringing Solis, definitely for that Knock. <laughs> I, I would say so. Um, I'm surprised we aren't seeing more Solis play from the Firebirds. I don't think we've really we've seen it maybe once or twice. Honestly, like Solis is very weird because she's very situation. You'd rather have a Pulse overall. I I'd say. Um, I yeah, think, I think Pulse just does a little bit better because it's not just gadgets that you're seeing. Uh, you're, you're seeing their heart rates. And with Solis, it's a little bit better to, um, to like display where people are. But if you have good team communication, which the Firebirds do, 
you can just you can mm -hmm. just show them as Paul. So you can just be like, okay, they're here, they're a kitchen, they're upstairs, right here. So I I think it's all very situational. Yeah, definitely. Now we are seeing the racers slowly but surely pushing onto that second floor office bedroom site where their firebirds aren't holding, but they're holding that they are holding that area because it's right above that site and they really want to do oh. that top down push. I don't know what just happened, but Ice Helix. I think a frost, it, uh, frost it mat way. It sounded like a frost mat mixed with Ice Helix <laughs> taking them out. <laughs> just a lot of noise going out there, but the kill feed registering for Ice Helix. Quisby laying down some suppressive fire. Whoa! As, wow, Ice Helix is Xerxes getting, again, we're seeing some really, we're seeing moment after moment of just like two really quick kills in quick succession. Um, but DNA oh, wow. for plays, seeing Quisby, noticing the Valkyrie there, just kind of like not processing. And I've done that time and time again, <laughs> where it's very clear you see somebody. But and you by just the time, keep on going. The, by the time your brain registers <laughs> that, that point, you know, the, that, that 20 millisecond gap of, oh, hey, that's somebody I need to be shooting. <laughs> You're already gone. And I hate when that happens because you feel so, I have felt so stupid when yep. that happens. But... I'm glad, you know, I'm glad it happened for the Firebirds because I'm very biased, you know, as you can see, you know, in case you're wondering. Um, but round six, the Firebirds are defending for the last time here on that second floor site. Will we see them rede redeem themselves for a, I mean, we did see them earlier, as I say that. Uh, so they don't need to redeem themselves, but will we see a good uh, defense from them? Will we see success here? Or will we see the Racers pulling out a Flores? Will we see something slightly different? What do you think? Um, right now, I it, it's really tough to say because Firebirds are not playing like the orthodox way you play this map. Normally, you'd be in basement a lot of the time, but we've seen kitchen, and we've we have seen, not seen basement. Yeah, we have not that. seen basement. Like it, and that's that's pretty a standard one. But it makes sense because it is so meta, is that people know how to attack it well, and I, with. Osa as well not being banned it makes it even easier for them with Kali like you get that long lines of sight it's just it's really difficult to defend right now I'd say definitely um but just going kitchen and going uh I think it's uh is it bar and bar games, games room, yeah. yeah is that th those two you don't see that often that those are usually the third to last picks and Firebirds have just always been doing this unconventional method of pelling them and it, it it works to their favor chalet is a really good map for the firebirds definitely now uh the firebirds on this last defensive round running kaid jaeger frost valkyrie and oryx valkyrie is going to be a great great pick here a lot of great places for the cameras to get intel um xerxes taking a ton of damage there um and as oryx you know you take damage every time you run through a wall so you kind of have to be sparing with that, those those dashes in a sense. But oh. we did see Xerxes taking on Suan. Unfortunately, Monty Pancho getting that refrag on Xerxes, evening it out to a 4v4. But I think Xerxes getting that kill there, you know, no shame there, especially when you're a roamer. You know, if you get one kill, it's going to be great, especially mm -hmm. when it's an IQ. That is going to be so good for the Firebirds because now they have less of an issue with those electronics. Now, the ADS taking out that ace charge that was trying to, to destroy that shield. Teshi taking out that knock, though. That is a, such a good pick for the mm -hmm. Firebirds as well, making sure that they don't have to worry about somebody sneaking up behind them. Um, Quisby still holding that piano room. Ice Helix going to be moving around trying to get some sort of long angle onto that piano window. Um, and we do see, you know, three of... The racers kind of pushing in from that angle. Will we see Teshi sneak up behind, probably from that fireplace, and take him out? Whoa, Quisby though, peeking, taking out DNA <laughs> plays. Oh my gosh, this is a, this is the like, the best game we've seen from Quisby mm -hmm. all season. Like you know, playing a little bit more of a supportive role in the previous weeks, but now has been more of a top fragger. Uh, is great to see. You know, mm -hmm. no complaints for me in the slightest. <laughs> um, but we're just seeing a lot of confidence overall from the I, Firebirds yeah. and, and just great shots. And that that last one, what a great pick. Just hearing uh, breaking the um, the barbed wire and then knowing where they are, that, mm -hmm. that was just so smart. Definitely. We're seeing some great peaks or swings, I should say. Ooh. And as I say Ooh. that, Vice Hill is getting a pixel onto that window uh -oh. and Quisby <laughs> trying to throw that C4. It's not taking it. But the Firebirds <laughs> are not letting that stop them and going to be taking round number six. Firebirds are 
just about two wins away from taking this map in its entirety, but they're switching sides. They're now on attack, and that is a whole new ball game. Mm -hmm. Attack is so different, and we have seen that from the Firebirds where, you know, they're really good on defense, but then they, you know, kind of have issues on attack, or, and we've seen them on the flip-flop yeah. where they are doing phenomenal on that attack and then just kind of aren't able to to get that upper hand on defense. So what are you expecting on their attack from this site or on this map? Hopefully right now, I, I mean, just the mental state, I would love to see the same confidence as defense going into attack. And right now we're looking at it, the same comps that they've been usually doing. We're seeing a lot of things that can be um, – adapted very quickly you see that yana you see that lion and you have those speed operators as well like it, it it this just seems very flexible and can adapt to change quickly definitely so that's hopefully what we're gonna see and hopefully some uh, some easy picks oh yeah i think that is what the firebirds need to focus on it's getting those getting as many easy picks as they can mm -hmm. you know if there's a roamer maybe double down and focus on that roamer um but you know, that maybe not double down all the way. Just have, like, two people focus on that. But uh, on this round number seven, the Firebirds on attack for the first time, running a Thermite, Ash, Ying, Line, and Yana. I think Thermite's going to be really good because you can open up some really big walls, getting some really good angles, especially onto that wall, onto uh, the fireplace lobby, the fireplace room, I guess. Fireplace is the... The call-out is just fireplace, <laughs> but it's all, ultimately Ooh. it's a really big living room in a sense, um, whereas the Murray State Racers on defense running that Smoke, Warden, Kaid, uh, Jaeger, and Valkyrie. Now, Smoke is going to cause issues for the Firebirds, meaning that, that those smoke grenades, uh, those toxic smoke grenades, I should say, um, are able to kind of disperse through a large area for a, a decent amount of time. I think it's like eight or nine seconds. So when you have three of those... And it's coming down to those last seconds. You could just throw them onto the mm -hmm. the site and make sure that they can't they can't come through. Um, so hopefully the firebirds don't have to remain at that point. They don't have to you know wait to the last few seconds to really take care of it. <laughs> you you um, never want it like you that. never want to. No, um, smokes canisters are they're not fun to breathe in. No, no. definitely. <laughs> um, I will say this though: Ice Helix is going to be using that EMP grenade on that wall. Will it be top or will it be bottom? What do you think? <laughs> I think it's going to be somewhere uh, I, I think it's going to be in the floorboards um, on the bottom side. I, I'd say try and putting or, or getting a little it's bit top. to the oh, oh, but unfortunately <laughs> the thing that the Firebirds were trying to not let happen happen. Happened. <laughs> DNA plays is taking that fireplace staircase oh! peaking, but Ice Helix is just better and is able to get that long angle. Unfortunately though their hard breacher has been taken out so they have no way of opening up that wall. They're going to have to focus on the other way, going around and hopefully going through piano slowly. But we're seeing those smoke grenades playing out for more of an area denial. Uh, smoke is on that piano. Um, will we see? We're seeing Tuan open up that side uh, window, maybe trying to go through. We're going to see smoke grenades being placed to counter smoke. A lot of smoke being played in that in that piano. Suan taking a ton of damage there. Ice Helix taking out. The Jaeger, it is now 4v3, but 33 seconds left on the clock. So the Firebirds really need to step it up and push in. Teshi going to be kind of going around through that Solarium. Looking for those Capkin traps, despite Capkin not being in play. However, Bravo taking out Tuan, evening it out. Three against three. Ice Helix still trapped on that office balcony. Dis I, w I, I think this is, this is really coming down to the wire, but I say that Ice Helix is just great. Getting... That pick on Suan, but getting refacked. Oh. Xerxes, though, taking it out. The Firebirds need to plant. Firebirds need to plant. Well, oh, the Firebirds plant. Or they not, don't need to plant. <laughs> they don't need to plant because they're able to do it. It's just that was... match. <laughs> <laughs> they do that to me all the time, and I, I can't take it. When you go, when you wait for those last second moments where it literally comes down to you need to be either holding F or their head needs to be clicked on and you need to end the round. There's no room for hesitation. What's that, what's that one quote for the movie? It's like, they do this every they year. They do this every year. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But the Fire Reds taking out a great, great last second play. I, I'd say great, but it was way too risky. Yeah. Because one split second, you know, misplay, maybe, you know, Murray State proned. And the Firebirds had to take a little bit of time to aim a little bit more. 
That could have been it, and it could have been round over in favor of the Murray State Racers. But somehow the Firebirds were able to do it. <laughs> Moving on to match point, though, the Firebirds needing this round to secure it. But we saw that last map that they lost a few times. Mm -hmm. So it's still, you know, a lot of round to be played. Will we see the Firebirds come back or will we see them lose a few rounds here? Hard to say. I would say come back. They're still in the lead, but the Firebirds cannot lose it at this point. They cannot lose this momentum that they've gained. Now, it looks like the same site is going to be played. Murray State running Smoke, Bandit, Jaeger, Alibi, and Valkyrie, whereas your Firebirds are running an Ace, an Ash, a Ying, Lion, and Iana. Pretty similar switch up or composition here. However, Firebirds running a Ace in, an Ace instead of a Thermite, and we're seeing a Bandit instead of a Kaid, and yeah, I'd say that was pretty similar. No, they had a Warden roaming. Yeah. Um, and I believe now they have an Alibi. Um, they did not. I, I, I'm not quite sure um, what we're going to see from the Firebirds here. Uh, but I'm hoping it's something, you know, we're going to see. Hopefully we can see the Firebirds kind of open up that wall onto that fireplace um, area. But Teshi dropping out, maybe dropping off the balcony. You got to be careful, though, because you see, you know, I think some of these, these racers players might be trying to are, are not against getting one or two picks through a window on the outside. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in a few rounds before. So you got to be careful when you're outside. No place is really safe unless you have absolutely no angles. And we're going to see uh -oh. Lion trying to throw the MP grenades. Unfortunately, though, not throwing both of them on top and not onto the bottom. And when you have a bandit, you can guarantee it's on the bottom. So um, a little oh, bit of a... Oh, yeah. They... Oh, then bandit probably wasn't scanned. Or it wasn't yeah, found out no, in the droning phase. Yeah, I, 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 that's definitely uh, heartbreaking there because when you open up that wall, you're going to have a great time. Uh, the key now, though, is maybe having somebody go from below and just shoot up at those bad, those bandit batteries, mm -hmm. disabling them, and then the fibers can open up that wall. Uh, Xerxy, though, oh. is downed in that fireplace. Unfortunately, DNA plays getting that final pick, the final bullets, um, and going to be running through Kitchen. Still in that match, though. Will we see the Firebirds come back? Uh, uh oh. Oh. We might we might have a little bit of oh there we go. I'm not quite sure what happened <laughs> there. It looked like it was gonna crash though, which was uh gonna be a bad time for no, us was, on this match just point. Forward but, moonwalking. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. He was, he was breathing. <laughs> Lion was breathing. Just a tad bit. Um Ice Helix though marking that player on the piano. Now, forty seconds left and the Firebirds really haven't pushed forward. I it, it's it's not quite sure what's oh. happening here. It almost looks like we're having a few players lag out here, uh, but that might just be our spectator. Hard to say. Uh, huh. We might be having a technical pause here. I don't know. But unfortunately, Teshi is taken out, and Ice Helix is taken out. It is now 2v5. Quisby and Tuan are the remaining Firebirds. Will we see them come back with 15 seconds left? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I think this this might be a technical problem. Uh, not quite sure. The Firebirds, though, do have a few rounds to, to I wouldn't say waste, but, like, it's not the end of the world that they lost this round. They still, it does look like they're going to be having a rehost. Uh, they're lagging with tech issues. So we are, that was exactly what we expected. Yeah. <laughs> we saw, we, it almost looked like they were running well, they're in place. They are just dancing a little uh, bit. Yeah, a little bit of doing, an issue there. Doing aerobic um, exercises. You know, you can't, you, it's always fun. <laughs> However, with a rehost, that means we're going to take a quick break here while they fix that all uh, all out um rehost means they're going to remake the server remake the game and um get a better connection for both teams so we'll be back in probably five minutes probably five minutes hopefully not any longer with this match point so don't go anywhere
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, hopefully that those technical rehosts are done. It looks like it's done from our end, so we'll be getting back on the way with map two very shortly. The Firebirds ending that or moving into that rehost six to two. It's funny that now we're at match point and now we're experiencing that lag. <laughs> but as you saw on the stream, it was very clear. We we were so confused because it looked like our players were running in place, and that is not something you see in this game <laughs> unless you're lagging. It's a very notorious moment, but uh, we are moving into that match point once again uh, on map two. Carthage Firebirds versus the Murray State Racers. Firebirds have had a very, very great couple rounds here. Uh, I'm not going to say anything because we still have, you know, technically at minimum one more round here, but at maximum a whole lot more <laughs> rounds. Um, we have seen moments. We've seen a couple weeks ago where the Firebirds came back from a, you know, six to two deficit come back despite what All everybody odds. pretty much predicted. <laughs> Literally everybody was like, oh, the Firebirds are not going to come back, and they proceed to. So Racers could very easily come back, and especially the way they've been playing all night, I would not be surprised if that is what we saw. However, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of going to map three. Let's, uh, you know, maybe we want to uh, end it at map two here, uh, but ultimately we'll see here in the next mm -hmm. map. Now, based on the few rounds that we've seen on this map, on Chalet, the past eight rounds i believe what do you think the firebirds are doing well what do you think they're not doing well enough especially on their attack it's tough to say because we did only have that one round the other round of the <laughs> firebirds true. just dancing with the uh with the tech issues but i think really just getting that uh hard bridge down i mean we had some trouble the first time around just at, like <laughs> <laughs> Figuring out if it was a, a kite or is it if a it top? was abandoned. Is it above? Is it the top of the wall or the bottom of the wall? Yeah. However, if the first one doesn't work, then we can try decipher, the try the other one. But for some reason, Ice Helix, throwing the first one would be like, ah, maybe, maybe it's just joking. Maybe I it's like just... it, though. I like it. You yeah, know, maybe, maybe it's just playing a prank on us and it's the <laughs> second EMP grenade that'll actually activate it. Unfortunately, though, when it's a bandit, it's not going to be on the top of the wall. Uh, and that's which, why I that's why Thatcher is awesome. That's why it, it, is it great. doesn't matter. You can throw it halfway across the map; it'll, it'll still destroy the electric. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it is excellent to see. But I mean, from the Firebirds, we're seeing great, great players. We've seen Quisby, who's played a lot more of a supportive role the past weeks. I don't know what's happened this week, but I don't know if they were playing. They were doing their their Kovacs aim training before this. But they are hitting all of their shots tonight. Mm -hmm. They are hitting some amazing uh, swings, hit some amazing angles, and it's working out for them. And, I mean, that's from all the Firebirds. We're seeing uh, just an even amount of, you know, supportive roles but also offensive roles. And I think that is something our team really excels at is, you know, oh, I can get these kills, but I also can, you know, yeah. work with this team. You know, as opposed to the alternative where a lot of times there's a dedicated fragger. It's like, okay, you're going to be focusing on getting the kills. I'm just going to focus on making sure you get the kills. <laughs> um, and that might be what we're seeing from the Murray State racers. You know, we are seeing that, like, Bravo is getting is usually getting these these top of the leaderboard kills. Now, I believe it might be completely different. I'm not quite sure because uh, we are seeing other players, you know, like DualShock, who are getting some really good kills as well. Um, and we're seeing, you know, um, like Suwon having, having played like Osa. Osa is really good at getting kills, but if you can play those shields well, you're really helping out the rest of your team. So that is exactly like for me, when I play, I'm always, I, I, I like to kind of just focus on that supportive role because then if I get a kill, mm -hmm. it works out. But I can focus on like playing Flores. I just focus on opening up walls, <laughs> destroying, you know, shields and stuff. And you get um, to hide pretty safely behind everything else. You just get to control a little drone and go boom, boom. Boom, boom. Like, yeah, just I a little bit. You get, an, you get an RCXD from uh, Call of Duty, you know. <laughs> uh, Remote-controlled explosive device, which is funny because I figured that out like a month ago. I figured that out on stream where I'm like, I never realized that that is what RCXD stands for. Remote-controlled really? explosive device. Or what? drone, maybe it's drone. I just learned that right now. Well, there you go. I the thought more, it was just a the cool little know. code name. The more you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, it looks like there's some more technical difficulties. But I think – so let's talk about the new Siege Operator because we haven't had a chance to talk about that. That I don't think is going to be able to be played in this NECC season. I could be wrong, but it's coming out, and I believe, next week or the following week. I believe the so. The new Operator. What I forget the name Brava. of the – Brava. Brava. Uh, 
what do you think of their gadget? Now, their gadget is a drone. It's an attacker that can drone in and hack a defender gadget. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think? uh, Introducing Brava into Rainbow Six, what do you think is going to really change? I'm going to say more anxiety overall, um, just on the defense side. But, however, is that it, it is great in concept, but at the same time, it's pretty easy to distinguish what has been hacked and what hasn't been hacked. And then again, it's a drone. It's pretty much the same as Twitch. It's a it's a different type of Twitch, I would yeah. say. Um, but I think it'd be more useful for things like uh, like if you have a Maestro camera or something. It's something that's going to be a little bit more tougher to get out. You'll just have to break the shield, and it's a it's a bummer. It's kind of like um, if you get hacked by Dokabi. It's like, do you choose to shoot your own cameras yeah. and all that? So I th- I think it's going to be impactful, but not in the way that people are thinking. Like with the Capcan traps, like you, it, it's going to be easy to tell, you know, which which one we'll is see. which. Yeah, I and mean, you'll have to hack more for it to yeah. the, for it to actually, you know, pretty much uh, destroy an operator without them even knowing. Oh yeah, now you know, and there's so many changes to Rainbow Six coming in the next year. Uh, that is just going to completely change the mm-hmm. game in one area or another. But and lore we're, wise, and too. lore wise too. <laughs> we were, he was talking about that earlier. But moving on back to the game, your Firebirds are on match point six to two. This is it. The Firebirds cannot. I wouldn't say they can't afford to lose this one. They shouldn't lose this one. Um, and I hope that they don't. But it looks like the Murray State Racers on defense running a pretty unique strategy that we haven't seen previously. Running that Thorn, Jaeger, uh, Solis, Kessel, and Mozzie, whereas your Firebirds running a Flores, Ace, Ying, Ash, and Iyana. I am so happy. So, so happy. So happy that Ice Helix is running Flores. <laughs> Flores is like the greatest on this site, especially on this map oh, yeah. entirely. So I'm so happy. That we're seeing that. However, we do have the Mozzie that is a good counter against the Flores if not played properly. Um, hopefully, though, that the Firebirds and Ice Helix specifically can play Flores properly and doesn't have to worry about those uh, Flores drones. Now, we are seeing Xerxes kind of drone out that basement, that snowmobile garage. Um, once again, the audio isn't working. Uh, hopefully, that gets fixed very shortly. Um, as I say that, it is. Again, uh, it's <laughs> I was funny. afraid I had to do I sound know. effects again. I know. It, it, it's just uh, it's it's voice activated, you know. Um, <laughs> no, that would be cool. Yeah, it would be cool. Alexa, turn on the game. <laughs> Alexa, turn on the scoreboard. <laughs> hey Alexa, flawless round, please. I love that. Um, but Firebird's kind of pushing into that library right above site, and I think that is going to be the ticket to their success, the golden ticket of uh, winning this site. Now we are going to see Ice Helix droning in. Unfortunately, Xerxes is taken out by one of the racers. DNA plays. However, DNA plays took a ton of damage in order to get that. Uh, So it's not without uh, their own cost in a sense. But will the remaining Firebirds kind of push in and able to get a ref... I would say a refrag at that point. But will we see them get a pick to even it out? You know, we're already seeing probably half of the clock turned or taken off, um, ticked yeah, off, the ticked down. Is. There's the word. Uh, will we see? <laughs> I don't see. You, you said earlier I'm really good at words. Sometimes I don't. It's always those easy words. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to say this. It sounded right in my head, but apparently not. And unfortunately, Ice Helix, though, is taken out by one of the racers. And it is now three against five. Firebirds really need to spice something up. I'm not quite sure what has been going wrong these past few rounds outside of the technical difficulty. Um, but as we say that, just Twan, I don't know, just not aiming down the, and watching that doorway as they kind of pushed in and, and reloaded. Um, you really have to watch out for when you're reloading, you are um, a sitting duck. You know, you are, <laughs> and you especially are. At, uh, once the rework happens, where if you reload, you're only gonna have one bullet in the chamber, yeah. so you gotta make it count. That is exactly. It. I think that um, that that rework alone to this game is changing everything. Unfortunately, though, Quizby is taken out, and it is now Teshi versus the world. Will we see Teshi get an ace here? Five kills in five seconds. Five Let's kills see in it. a few seconds. Will we see that? Uh, we're gonna here see one, one of the players <laughs> fall. And it's a flawless round for the racers. 
what an interesting round there. I don't know what's going wrong with the Firebirds. They're losing this dominance that we've mm -hmm. seen all night. All of a sudden, it's, 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 and like Murray State has been playing great, but all of a sudden, we're just not seeing the Firebirds play yeah. well. And I think maybe it's, you know, mentality here. Maybe they're just way too confident. I don't think for that one. I think that one, Murray State, they, they had so much space to deal with. I mean, they, they took over. Not only library, they kept a one up there, but the entire lobby area was just a danger zone. Getting insight was a danger zone. Like going anywhere, basically on that first floor, was dangerous. You're saying so? You're saying that that first floor was a highway to the danger zone? It was a highway <laughs> to the danger zone. It, it is a highway you do not want to take. It was. It was a very, 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 very deadly defense. And I think it was just amazing by Murray State. It's going to be a kitchen this time around. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the fire breaks. Jinx, yomi, yeah. uh, yomi, uh, Pepsi, I'll say. Pepsi. 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 Yeah, I'll say Pepsi. I'll, yeah, I'll take a Pepsi. I'll get you a cherry Pepsi. Uh, oh, I love I a cherry know. Pepsi. Uh, but your Firebirds <laughs> are on attack once again, running a sledge, Ace, Blitz, Iana, and Ash. Now that Blitz is make or break, I don't know, especially against the Thorn. Hard to say at that point, but Thorn brought the shield instead of the barbed wire, so honestly, it might be easy pickings as a Blitz. However, mm -hmm. they do have to worry about the 2C4 and the impact grenade. However, Solis only has one impact grenade remaining so honestly i don't know what to expect from tuan's blitz here you know i think tuan is a a phenomenal blitz player um wait did, did Tessie just shoot at the uh at their friendly drone i don't think so i'm not quite sure i didn't catch that um <laughs> unfortunately though oh my gosh oh, tuan taking dear. a ton of damage there all right off the bat i'm not quite sure what that was but i suspect it might have been a thorn mine um just a, a bad time. Oh, those hurt. I don't like them. They really do hurt. <laughs> uh, both emotionally and physically. Uh, because it's, you have so much time to kind of oh. react to it, and you always <laughs> react to wrong. 50% sure. of the time, <laughs> it doesn't work at all. <laughs> um, but we're going to be seeing Tuan kind of push in from that second floor, though, um, into piano. We're seeing Tuan kind of once again really scope out the area. Oh, Quisby, though, taking wow. out dual shot. I didn't even process that was a kill until I saw I heard you cheer and I saw the kill feed. Oh, oh my dear. gosh. One uh, oh my gosh, one of the racers kind of sneaking up up the solarium staircase despite four firebirds there. Nobody <laughs> was able to kind of respond to It just faster. runs away. I yeah. love it. <laughs> kind of regretting it there, but Ice Helix playing sledge perfectly on this site, opening up a ton of angles, a ton of peak angles onto that um that floor making sure that they can kind of peek through and oh. ice helix though missing that that sight that uh angle but it can be taking out the mute jammer teshi though taking out bravo it is now four against three and a decent amount of time left but not all the time in the world the firebirds really having to speed this up you know you can be as vertical as you want you can have the entire floor open up but if you're not on site to plant you're not going to have a good time mm -hmm. um Unfortunately, though, it looks like Ice Helix almost using the rest, the rest of that sledgehammer, Ooh, but not needed. Help. Xerxes taking out that Solis was is is arguably the greatest pick that they could have gotten because now they don't have to really worry about any sort of um, through the floor angle. And oh! Quisby seeing a, a pixel, a literal pixel, and it is now four against uh -oh, one. Uh -oh, Quisby having the back turn to the remaining player, but because they don't know that, we know that. Will we see <laughs> one of the Firebirds get this remaining pick, or is the Diffuser going to go off? The Diffuser has been planted, so now it is all up to DNA Plays 45 for the the Missouri or Murray State. <laughs> for the Missouri. Oh, my gosh. The Murray <laughs> State Racers. That, the last remaining player, 1v4. Either kill the remaining players oh! and defuse. But as I say that, is it needed? Xerxes seeing that head, seeing it, clicking it, having an otherwise fantastic time. Firebirds coming away seven to three on both maps tonight. Losing a few two the you know the two remote two rounds there, one of which I'll say was to, to lag, I'll fully say that. Which, <laughs> well, they wanted to have a little dance off with, with the lag. It was, it was kind of nice. <laughs> but ultimately, a fabulous, 
map one and mm-hmm. two from the fire rates. A few moments where it was kind of like, a, all right, what's happening here? But otherwise, it's just showing pro- mm-hmm. proving their dominance. Mercer- I say amazing opponents, though, as well. It, it just oh yeah, so much aggression and and what what's the word? It's like tactile, but what's strategy? Like- <laughs> I will say that strategy and and just the way that the um ah, I can't I had a great word not synergy but uh unity no like where you can flow throughout a map togetherness I'll go with that togetherness I'll go with that but but unity. we saw that a lot of adaptability and just just great defense Magnet. and great <laughs> great <laughs> offense from the racers like what what a what a great two maps this was oh, yeah. just such a fun night oh yeah it was great to see now murray state definitely a worthy opponent i think despite the round difference they really were giving mm-hmm. the fire Reds, uh, a hard time in a few of those rounds so um hopefully uh, you know, I think there's there's no shame in this loss, in all honesty. I am very biased, but I will say this. They were still a phenomenal team to play against, and um, I hope that we see them again in the future because ultimately I was really happy with our performance, and I was happy with, I mean, their performance. They really gave us issues where we, when we were succeeding, mm-hmm. it kind of disrupted us, and they adapted exactly what and, I and wanted. Those, those issues are so good for us to practice on, too, because it shows us our flaws in our own team comp, so it's, it's really nice to see where where we're going wrong? Oh, definitely. And, and so it, it's a great it was a great learning experience from those rounds and just the way that we adapted to it. It it, it was it's great to see. So really fun opponents, really oh, yeah. fun night. Great great night for some Rainbow Six Siege. But we will be back after just a quick like thirty second break for our post game interview. A player that had dominated all night tonight. A great great player to to interview. Uh, And I'm super excited, so don't go anywhere for that surprise mystery guest that you probably can guess because we've been raving about them all night. But we'll keep it it up in the mystery until then, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody, to the post-game interview after a phenomenal match tonight. Fire Reds going 7-3, and three, maps 1 and 2 against the Murray State Racers. Joining me is a player that performed phenomenally tonight, uh, uh, probably easily the, get the best game of the season so far. Just, you know, going previous weeks, going a little bit more of the supportive route, and I think going top frag at some point on the scoreboard. Joining me, Quizby, how are you? doing after that amazing map one and two i'm doing really good i'm super happy with how our team performed tonight i think uh we played them last year in activation and we had some scaredness going into this game because they were really good last year and they're still very good mm-hmm. i think our from week one to now there's been a massive change especially in our attack i mean there's still a lot to work on but i think there's a at least a massive noticeable change yeah, I mean, and definitely going in map one, I think, you know, you guys going flawless rounds one and two, and then I believe you lost one or two. At, no, I think just one right there. You know, what what happened? Like, did you guys just kind of just kind of have that wake up call? We're like, oh, you know, this is going to be a, a walk in the park. Yeah, I think we realized um, it wasn't going to be like super easy. They were clearly going to put up a good fight, which they did. That's for sure. There was a lot of really close rounds, especially on attack. <laughs> just we kind of got luck was Lady Luck was on our side, and 
Yeah. He ended up winning the round. But, I mean, going 7-3 and three is a, a beautiful margin to have. A great, great difference. Definitely going to help our, our round difference here on the scoreboard. But, you know, just reflecting as the team tonight, what, you know, going back from last week to this week, what is what did you guys, is there anything you guys really worked on that really showed that you've improved on this week? I mean, a very big um like thing we've been hitting on is uh, our communication and a lot of time it tends to get very cluttered like everyone's talking at once and it's very hard to understand what's happening and we've been really working on that and acknowledging what each other are saying just so it makes it a, just a little bit easier to understand where people are coming from whether they're attacking or defending mm -hmm. now on, on on villa specifically you know previous weeks when we played villa it wasn't as dominant so do, have you guys been working on villa have you guys really been it looked like you guys had really established positions and that ultimately i felt like that was the key to success there so we actually haven't been working on attack specific strategies at all it's more of just been an overarching communication with split pushing and having cutoffs and knowing where our cutoffs are and more just having that further map knowledge mm -hmm. and game knowledge as to how to like push a site and also get the roamers in the process. And yeah, I mean, it, it definitely showed. Uh, you could see there were so many moments tonight where it was very clear that communication was on point. Communication was the success oh, there. Yeah. Uh, and it's always great to see. It's always very. It's always great when we're seeing that from the stream. We know just how good it is because it looks like that they just are. All, you guys have all the knowledge in the world, um, and it's showing. But um, I think you know, focusing on map two there, you guys had an amazing lead there. And then, yeah, there was some technical issues, but it kind of looked like you guys lost your footing there. What what happened? Um, I think the little break kind of threw us off just a little bit because, like, we obviously had a flow going of how mm -hmm. attacks, our attacks were working, and they were working, and uh, I think that little timeout kind of messed us up a little bit. But we were able to get back on our feet, mm -hmm. just losing that one round and coming back and winning the last one. Yeah. Now, I, I think definitely there's a lot to celebrate tonight you oh, know, yeah. outside of the few moments. Uh, but going into next week, you know, you are confident, you are ready. But what do you want to be working on more for next week to kind of improve? I think, uh, like I said, our attacks still need work. Um, this was a very good team. And like I said, Lady Luck was on our side today with some attacks. And I think we need to be, I just think overall, a little bit more confident with our swings. Like as a whole like everyone sometimes gets like just like a little bit like scared because like you don't want to die you don't want to be that first death on the map you don't want to give yeah. them the man <laughs> advantage like no one wants that but i think sometimes you kind of just got to send it mm -hmm. and it works out you know yeah we, we saw tonight you guys swinging left and right and it worked out. i'd say you probably had a 90 percent success rate with those swings <laughs> yeah. there's some moments too where i'm like i that was there was a pixel there Oh and yeah. I did not process that that was a kill until after the fact. <laughs> until I saw it in the kill feed, it worked out. Um, but ultimately, I think looking back on tonight, there's definitely enough to su oh, to celebrate yeah. there because we, we have not had a success like this yet this season. Right. You know, this is definitely a good uh, margin to have. But you know, not getting too confident next week. Uh, but what do you think, in your opinion, the play of the game was tonight? What was your? I shouldn't say play of the game. What was the best play tonight? I don't know. It's hard to pick. There was a lot of good ones. Um, honestly, a big shout out to Harrison and Tuan on the Valk cams on defense. Mm -hmm. That got us a lot of kills. So it was more not so much a play, but their call outs were unbelievable. And it got me so many like just free swinging kills. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that that's, you know, Valkyrie being unbanned is the greatest. Now, that does remind me for my last question. The ban on Azami. What was the team's reaction to that? Because, I mean, I, I know Icelix loves to play a zombie, especially on this map, but what was the reaction to that? Um, I think we were kind of like a little surprised because we didn't think she was that oppressive on Villa to be bannable. But I guess to them, they thought she was, so...